Hi, so I have Melissa Clark, the sales director of US Blanks with me today. How are you doing, Melissa? I'm good. How are you? I'm, you know, in a house. <laughs> yeah, no one's in where they're supposed to be. That's for sure. So you guys uh, have been doing the mask thing. Can you tell me how that's been going for you and um, what like the basic mask design is? Yeah, so uh, we got into the mask game. Um, it feels like forever ago, but I think it's been eight weeks now. Um, you know, this is for everybody. It's been absolutely insane. Uh, we started thinking, okay, we know the demand is going to be there. So we're going to, we went from transitioning from a full t-shirt production shop uh, in-house to thinking, okay, we're going to make a couple hundred masks a day. We're yeah. going to ramp, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to wrap up to about 20,000 a week. And in the first three days, we got order, uh, over a million units ordered. A million units in three days? Yeah. So, and we only have three people on our sales staff. And so you can see, like, what kind of pressure that brought on our team. Um, so we've been playing catch up. We, as of today, all those orders have now shipped and subsequent orders. So we're completely back in stock and producing. So we ramped up to, I think, close to like 175,000 units a week. Wow. Um, and you think about scalability to be able to do that in, you know, we did that in three weeks. Um, and, and so, so we're- Was that a ton of new hires? No, we're still just the three. Uh, right. What about the actual like sewing? Where is that being run right now? It's in LA. Uh, yeah, so we had it, you know, you think about the compression piece of it that you went from our warehouse usually has uh, between cutting, sewing and shipping 75 to 100 people in it a day um, mm. side of the sales and production staff. We had to cut that to nine. And so, you know, facilitating and trying to act uh, as you were a normal company because we're such an at once industry and we behave that way. Mm -hmm. um, that it's created a lot of stress and a lot of different dynamics. We've had a, um, we've been fortunate that we've been able to bring back some of our staff. This um, we had to put some people on furlough, unfortunately, at the beginning. But through this, we've brought uh, a good chunk of our warehouse staff to help facilitate the shipping piece of it. Wow. So uh, tell me a little bit about like that first conversation when you guys decided hey, we're going to basically stop all production and make masks. Was there just like a phone call or a text? Uh, well, I'll never forget this. So when San Francisco put in their um, stay at home order, right? Mm -hmm. Things were about to go really sideways quick uh, for the entire state of California. The night that um, Governor, Newsom, uh, Governor Newsom put in the order, uh, I flipped out because I'm like, oh, God, I think I just lost my job, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I called Kevin, and he said, I'm already on it. We, we're a government facility anyways. We're a place of performance for the government, producing military uniforms. So we're able to stay open, um, and we're going to transition to doing that and making masks. And we uh, looked at gowns and everything and just couldn't get to a price competitiveness uh, point that we could do that. So we've moved locations to fix the glitching. Um, now you're, this is your bedroom, I'm assuming, with the uh, the toys and the baseball? With uh, the T-Rex, he's my favorite. He's our security guard. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, so you, we were talking about the masks, but what are you seeing for like t-shirt sales? Has Is it at like zero? Is it at like 40%? Uh, it's coming back. So I would say, you know, two weeks ago, it was um, maybe 80% down. Um, we're seeing that tick up pretty substantially. Uh, it's definitely transitioning. More of my day is being focused on t-shirts than it is masks at this point. Um, because the market has stabilized in 
mass. There's stuff readily available kind of all across the market. Yeah. Um, yes. And so they're, we're be able to get back into our normal functionality. I think, and as people get back to work and retail and online and e-commerce are starting to come back, e-commerce never left. They've been doing great. But so you're starting to see those projects come back. We've also, you know, we do a lot of custom cut and sew projects. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're seeing all those come back online as well. Uh, so you think people are kind of preparing for two, three weeks from now, things being a lot more opened up, so they're fixing their inventory now? Yeah, and you're also seeing, the, you know, um, people put together the work at home kits because you're going to need the branding, um, you know, as we become more of a remote workforce, which I think is going to be the result of this, you're going to see companies, you know, need things for their their team so they still feel part of that environment and a lot of that's just going to be branding and clothes specific hmm. have you seen people doing that yet with doing uh like sending their own staff gear for meetings or a little bit you've seen some of it um but i think that that if this extends longer and you know you're going to have to keep employee engagement very high to keep pro uh, productivity and all those things. Mm -hmm. So something that's tactical, you know, and that they live in physically is going to be important. What's your um, a kind of concept of the next year um, as far as things sort of normalizing with sales? Are you expecting some clients to just never come back um, and go out of business? Are you thinking the industry will bounce back easily? I think it's going to be in the middle of those two. I know that there's been several businesses already uh, in the screen printer world. There's already been some fairly large shops that have closed down, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this is going to be the industry almost needed a, a jolt to it to help take us to the next step and mm -hmm. realize all the capabilities that we have and how agile we really can be. It's pretty it's very impressive how quickly from a mass standpoint, everyone, you know, six weeks ago was, oh my God, I'm going to go out of business. And now right. uh, I can't keep up and, you know, figuring out how to make a jig and, you know, that whole system that Ryanet or whoever's put together. Oh yeah. Action, action made that for Ryanet. And it was like so fast I, when they posted that for sale, I was like, wow, you guys were quick. They must've been designing it while masks were barely even starting. Well, and but think about how much ingenuity that takes. Instead of mm -hmm. flat-footed, they um, came up with a solution. And as people, you know, there was one shop that is very close to me, and they're like, I, "We're not going to make it." You know, they were dead set. We're going to go out of business. Right. And then we talked to them and said, "You know, you really should get in this mass game today. Right? right? Call all your customers. This is going to be a thing." And because they're selling masks now, they are able to stay open. They're mm -hmm. going to reduce their, you know, getting rid of one of their autos, but they're going to be able to stay alive. So there's still light at the end of the tunnel. Now, do I think events and things like that, that business is gone temporarily. It will come back. It will be different. I think how we engage uh, apparel and corporate promotions is going to be very different going forward. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how gutsy governors will be with live events because we do live events with Hyundai um, and we're being told that the June 28th race is still happening in upstate New York. And I'm just kind of like, how? How is 70,000 people going to a race? But at the moment, we're being told like, oh, you should probably buy a flight. I'm like, I'm, why am I buying a ticket now? I could buy it the day of and it'll be available. Right. Uh, it's it's very interesting to see um, kind of what's happening. And, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Problems with Max. Um, it's, it's very interesting to see. And I think you have to be very careful because you don't want to put yourself in a position like with that, that you're buying all that inventory mm -hmm. and then no event. Right. right. So it's you're in so much limbo because there's so much more risk involved um, with those type of events. Even for them, I don't know how they're justifying having that event. 
I don't even know if they'll be allowed to. I mean, if the state of New York will even allow it. So I think I think we're in this weird phase where each event is getting canceled, like at the last 30 days because they can push it until then to say it's canceled instead of just wiping out their whole summer, um, even though that might happen. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I just personally hope that things start going a little bit back to normal and that we're able to do things again. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I miss seeing all my friends. I miss seeing you guys and uh, just doing my thing. You know, being at home for eight weeks now has been really weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what is U.S. Blank's plan for the masks? Are you planning on it being an entire year-long, like, a project or are you thinking that you know maybe by july or august the market saturation will be so intense that there's no reason to sell them and you just go back to your your old normal so i we're, we're seeing two different things happen uh one demand has kind of subsided as other options have entered the market mm -hmm. at a price point um which is great but i think that this is going to be um, a fashion piece. This is the new t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, and this will be just part of our line. This pandemic isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Um, unfortunately, but as we all look to go back to work and back into offices, back to schools, those face coverings are going to be required. You know, it's not out of the realm of possibility to think that every American should own, uh, 15 to 25 of these. Wow. <laughs> So, and you want it to be comfortable. You know, you don't necessarily want, um, if it's one that you're picking out individually or for your team, you don't want one that, you know, isn't nice and isn't comfortable to wear. If you've got to wear one for eight hours a day. Yeah. So we're kind of just, you know, sticking to that. And because we've had a lot of great feedback with ours that it's comfortable and is a mask can be. Um, so we're just kind of sticking at it and we're, introducing tie-dye and we're going to be able to do uh, custom PMS color matching at low minimums. So wow. kind of taking our DNA and bringing it just into a different uh, format. For the Pantone matching, that's a great idea. What, um, what would the minimums be on it? We're looking around a thousand pieces right now. Okay. So yeah, so definitely like a corporate order could justify that. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's not unreasonable. So, um, and you know, we, that around in about a week. Wow, that's cool. And then you can do your your Xbox mask or whatever corporate. That's thing. right. That's smart. Um, so how are you like dealing with contacting clients since you can't go into buildings? I mean, as a sales rep, you used to visit print shops. I, what are you doing now to actually get anybody's attention um, in like this world of just email and video chat? Uh, just scream up and down, uh, a lot of texting, checking in with people. Um, I've been very fortunate that I've got a pretty extensive network uh, of people that I work with regularly and um, have had kind of some of those types of relationships and selling style for a long time anyway. Um, I'm the only outside rep for all 50 states, so I don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of just business as normal for me. Um, but a lot, the conversations have been a lot more intense of how do we keep you open? How do we help you transition through this? I, have you been hearing a lot of, um, I, have you been seeing, okay, so what I've been kind of noticing is that the bigger your overhead, the quicker your, your demise at the moment. In a way, it's actually kind of like a boon for like a guy with a old auto in his garage. Yeah. Because... He really doesn't have this like I'm crushing amount of money just eating away from all of his uh, profits. Um, have you been seeing people kind of decide, oh, maybe we should just go bankrupt now and not even try to stretch it out? I haven't seen that. What's amazing with screen printers uh, is that the entrepreneurial spirit, I can't say that word, is very innate in this. And so you kind of see this win at all costs, survive at all costs mentality. Yeah. And knowing, yeah, I may have to reduce, I may have to, you know, go from 
a five, six, seven auto shop down to one because this uh-huh. is what I can do. Um, but I haven't seen anyone giving up unless they absolutely, there's no other way out. So it's been a fighting spirit. Now I think, you know, receivables and all of those things are going to be tough um, from all ends um, because you're just seeing it's so tight. And if people haven't made the adjustments to PPE, it's, I got to imagine it's very tough right now. Hey, do you think, um, cause we've had a bit of a problem with people paying like outstanding invoices. Yeah. Do you think that the industry is going to turn into pay me now or never? And we're going to see people losing 30 day terms. I think it's going to happen in the next 10 to 15 days. If it hasn't happened already. Yeah. Um, no one has the cash to withstand this. Um, because you're starting to see receivables go, you know, maybe they were on 60 day terms. You're seeing it go to 180 days. Um, and these aren't small invoices with small companies. So uh, that, that gets to be an issue. You know, if I can't, if I can't get paid from those bigger customers in a timely fashion, it makes it harder to extend credit to the smaller guy. So it, it just, it's a, com- it's all compressed and this just becomes an issue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any parting words of win- wisdom to print shops that you've been seeing work uh, for other people? Uh, get out there, start talking to your customers. Um, everybody needs a mask. I can't uh, emphasize that enough. And that's not from a sales standpoint. I don't care, you know, what brand someone's wearing. It really just matters to me that people are covered up and keeping each other safe. Probably edit that first part out. But um, yeah, just making sure you and your family are safe. We're going to get through this. We're going to figure it out. What happens on the road outside of this and after this, I don't know, but we're going to, we're going to be here and we're going to figure it out together. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, multiple so many backdrops this is the uh, screen printers version of uh my crib what's that show the cribs yeah right cribs (laughs) everyone gets to tour like random houses yeah (laughs) we can all we can all judge each other's cleanliness that's right my house is actually really clean and tim gets all the credit for it so (laughs) um all right well thank you awesome thank you